Hello investigators and welcome to Until the End of Time. My name is Veronica, thank you so much for tuning in. I've got some quick news updates in light of the recent FFG livestream, so thank you for joining me and let's get to the news. First up, a little bit of sad news. Unfortunately, Cyclopean Foundations has been delayed slightly. Patrick, Shaheen and I have been having some issues getting the schedules to align and we've all been quite busy, and because of that, uh, recording hasn't happened, basically. So the Cyclopean Foundations is slightly delayed. My apologies, we're gonna try to get back to it as soon as possible, but that means there's no Cyclopean Foundations this weekend. Don't worry, we are planning to finish this. Secondly, and much more importantly, during the most recent livestream, Maxine announced that Scarlet Keys is the last product she worked on for the Arkham Horror LCG. She is leaving the game in the capable hands of Duke and Nick, and keep in mind that the decision was most likely made well over a year ago because FFG works very far in advance when it comes to this game. I'm going to miss Maxine. I think she's a fantastic developer and just a great person in general. I think she's been a part of this community and helped it become what it is today. A sign of positivity, a beacon of inclusivity, and just somebody who really makes the lives of a lot of other people better. I think... Yeah, she's been an inspiration for me personally. She's a fantastic human being. I mean, not that I've been able to prove she might be an avatar of chaos for all we know, but either way, I'm going to miss her a lot. But is she's not gone gone, right? She's even still working at FAG. I don't think they've announced yet what project Maxine is working on, but safe to say that I'll be checking it out because she's a fantastic designer. That being said, I don't think that Duke or Nick are going to let this game down either. Both of these people have been on the game for a little while now. They both are probably reasonably well known in the community. I think Nick a little bit more. He is a former Mythos Buster. Uh, but both of these uh, gentlemen have made scenarios that I'm quite fond of. Duke, notably, was an intern when he did a lot of the design for the light in the fog scenario in Innsmouth. And that is a scenario I happen to really enjoy. And because he did so much work, basically Maxine said we should hire him, and they did. Uh, Nick is also often credited with doing a lot of work on the fantastic standalone scenario Murder at the Excelsior Hotel. I personally consider it to be basically the best standalone. So if that's the level of quality we can expect from these two, then I am very excited for the future. And yeah, I think the game has a bright future ahead of it. Okay, and I don't know why they keep saying that, but every time they talk about the future of the game, they mention that it has a bright future. And now I'm getting really paranoid because at first I thought they just wanted to be positive, but they keep bringing it up. And now I'm worried they have something planned. And I have no idea what it is, but if you know, then please let me know because it is driving me up the wall because I have to know what they mean by that. Okay. Moving on to the campaign. Now, if you want to get into the campaign with no spoilers whatsoever, then now would be the time to, to quit the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, please leave a nice comment in the chat or in the chat in the below. But thank you so much and I'll see you in the future videos. If you're interested in hearing about the Scarlet Keys campaign expansion, then here we go. There are a bunch of new terms that we heard. There was also just a little bit of the first scenario. They were going to London. There were a couple of very cool art pieces, but in general, it was just like Arkham scenario doing Arkham things. And I think these campaign terms are a lot more interesting to analyze with what we know right now. First up was time. Now, time I think was only relevant out of the game so far. It was something they were told to record when they traveled from Arkham to London. We know that this campaign is going to feature some kind of world map and that we're going to be traveling around with it and that it is going to be much less linear than previous campaigns. And I think this is one of the ways in which that is kind of represented. We are going to have to spend time basically traveling and presumably if we take too much time, that's going to have some consequences. Hollow is an interesting uh, term. We haven't really seen what it does yet, but what we do know is that there are going to be certain encounter cards that set cards from your deck aside out of play as hollows. Now, during the scenario, there was a lot of referencing to things disappearing and kind of weird blurry effects on reality almost. And I also seem to remember that this is something that came up in the Secrets of Scarlet book, which is the book that kind of recently got released and has some story implications for this campaign as well. I have no idea what it does gameplay-wise yet, other than obviously that cards that get set aside, you can't access anymore. So this might be a campaign where going into a very combo-heavy deck might not work as well. 
And then finally, probably the most exciting new mechanic is the concealed mechanic and the expose mechanic, which we'll get into in a moment to counter it. So concealed comes with a number. Um, so for the Red Glove Man, for example, it was concealed one per investigator. And it is a mechanic where we have so far only seen on enemies. And what it does is when you draw or would spawn an enemy with a concealed keyword, you spawn it in the shadows, which is a set aside kind of semi out of play zone. But what else you do is you take mini figures, like the mini cards that we normally use for to, look to denote the location of investigator. They are also mini cards for every enemy in this expansion, as well as a bunch of decoy mini cards. And so you take the mini card for that enemy, you flip it over and they all have the same back. You grab a number of decoys equal to the concealed number. So a number equal to your player count. We also saw one that had like decoy two. So you just take two, or sorry, concealed two. You would take two decoys, you shuffle them together, and then you spawn all the mini cards at your location and connecting locations. And I think you had to start with your own location. Um, and so now we don't know where that enemy is exactly because a couple of those places, there are decoys. In other places, they are the actual enemy. So how do you find out? Well, that's where the new expose keyword comes in. So I don't even, it's not even really a keyword. It's a rule star. Basically, that's what you do to flip the enemy. The full rules of this have not been completely outlined, so it's possible that there was a slight amount of misunderstanding or maybe not entirely clear, but Maxine can explain it like this. So you can investigate whatever location there is a mini card, face down mini card at. Instead of discovering clues, you expose one of those mini cards. If you have an effect that automatically discovers one or more clues, you can instead expose a card. Now, the way that this was explained, I believe it is meant to replace all the clues you're getting. So an effect like working a hunch is going to be much better than something that might discover like three clues because you only really need the one. As a side note, I think this makes working a hunch pretty cool for this campaign because from what we saw, chasing down and finding these concealed enemies is going to be a big part of certain scenarios. At least the first one seemed to lean on it heavily. So having a couple of ways to quickly expose some enemies seems very good. But not only that, you can also fight or evade the concealed enemies. In this case, the shroud value of your location becomes the difficulty of the test, basically the fight or evade value. Now, while this doesn't count as evading an enemy or fighting an enemy, like there's cards like pickpocketing that you get to draw a card when you evade an enemy, that wouldn't work here, but it is still an evasion attempt. So someone like Finn Edwards still gets a bonus action to expose one of them using evasion. And in general, I think I am a big fan of this kind of mechanic where it would have been very easy, maybe a few years ago, I'm thinking like old, like maybe Dunwich era design, to have all these exposed enemies and the only way you can find out where they are is by investigating or getting clues. But that would have made the life of the Guardian incredibly miserable because they can only just wait for the Seeker or whoever else is investigating to find all these concealed enemies and then they have people to beat up. But in this case, if you are the fighter and you have nothing to do because there's no enemies in play, you can just start, you know, presumably beating up pedestrians <laughs> to try and find uh, concealed enemies. And so I really like that this makes it very possible for everyone to contribute because if you can't fight, evade, or investigate, you're probably doing some very supporty thing. And in that case, you probably shouldn't be dealing with the expos anyway, but most investigators are gonna be able to do at least some of that. Likewise, you could also automatically damage or automatically evade the enemies, I'm pretty sure. Um, Maxine mentioned Dynamite Blast, but it was also like, if you use Dynamite Blast, you would only get to flip one enemy. So that sounds kind of bad. The details were a little unclear, so please make sure to check the rules book when you find when you finally get it, which should be November 18th for most of us, I believe. Either way, this is a mechanic I'm really excited about. I think it's very different from mechanics that we've seen in the past. I think it's a cool mechanic to build a campaign out, and it seems like something that every investigator in the game is going to be able to interact with, which is very nice because we've had certain scenarios in the past where like, if you didn't have a, a high investigate, you just couldn't really do anything um, not to mention something like undimensional or scene where if you don't have high willpower you just set way back in that scenario but this feels like the kind of mechanic that you can interact with in a lot of different ways whether that is additional actions for your rogue to try to get more tests seekers getting testless clues or fast effects guardians blowing things up mystics might have some very tricky ways of exposing enemies and survivors are just gonna fail and then expose an enemy i mean why not 
So yeah, I'm really excited for the, this campaign based on what we saw. And that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. It's a short one, but there's there was enough, just enough news here that I felt like I should make a video. Plus, I wanted to say goodbye to Maxine on the channel. Um, thank you for watching. Please leave nice comments for Maxine in the chat and in the description or in the comments. Sorry, uh, because I know she does occasionally wander over and read them, and I just want her to know that she's a fantastic human being and thank her. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you until the end of time.